chapter 15. We're going to start in verse 18 tonight and read down to verse 26. Proverbs chapter 15. Starting in verse 18, when you find your places, if you'll stand with me in reverence to God's word. Amen. All right. Starting in verse 18, it says, A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. The way of the slothful man is an hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. <coughs> A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Folly is joy to him, that is destitute of wisdom. But a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the, in the multitude of counselors, they are established. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? Or how good is it? The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. Yeah. Lord, we thank you tonight for your words. Lord, how pleasant they are. Amen. Lord, thank you for uh, giving them to us so that we might know you more and to be able to follow in the right paths and the right ways. Lord, that we might truly be blessed in our day, uh, days that we live. Lord, that they might be uh, full of your goodness and truth. Lord, we just love you and thank you for all that you do for us, even though we don't deserve it. Amen. Lord, we just pray that you would help us to be all that we can be for you. Lord, to give our lives and present a living sacrifice to you. That you might use us for your honor and glory. To be able to be ministers to others, Lord, of the reconciliation that we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, to uh, understand that we have a choice each day that we live. To either serve you or to serve ourselves. Lord, that we would choose each day that we wake up to serve you. And to be a light in this world as you live in us. Lord, that we might decrease and that you might increase. Amen. Lord, we just pray that you would use me tonight to speak your truth. Lord, that you would speak <coughs> through me. Lord, and speak to our hearts that we might be drawn closer together and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. You may be seated. So starting in verse 18, A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. And really it's a sign of wisdom, isn't it? It's a sign of wisdom for someone who can control their emotion, who can control their reaction, uh, and not let it uh, be something that causes strife or stirs up strife. But to be able to step back from a situation and allow God uh, to put upon their heart and mouth what needs to be said or what doesn't need to be said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, takes a, it takes a lot more strength and wisdom to uh, bite your tongue than it is to allow your flesh to come into the way and, and just say whatever. And uh, that strength comes from God. Amen. That strength comes from uh, the wisdom uh, that we have in Jesus Christ. And so uh, it really is wisdom uh, and growth in the, in the grace of God. To, to grow in His grace, to grow in the Spirit of God, to be able to allow the Spirit of God to control our uh, tongue to control our uh, emotions to control uh, us from doing something uh, that is not of God yeah. and so uh, there's many scriptures that talk of this in James chapter 1 
And I know we all know these scriptures. James chapter 1 and verses 19 through 25 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So what is he talking about here? He's talking about being slow to speak, and slow to wrath, but quick or swift to hear, and understand before we speak, before uh, we say things. To allow God's Word to work in us. Not just to be hearers of the Word, but doers of the Word. And it takes practice. Uh, if we're going to practice the Word of God, if we practice what we preach, it's going to be something that we have to exercise ourselves in. In that godliness that is in God's Word. And not in the uh, things of the flesh. So it takes repetition. It takes giving ourselves wholly to the Word of God, to do it, not just to hear it, but to do it, to keep it, uh, to practice it in our lives. And when we begin to practice it in our lives, then we begin to become uh, equipped with the things that God has given to us to be able to do what He says in His Word. And therefore, if we do it, we are like that man. Uh, that is blessed in all his deed. We will be blessed also. But if we aren't, if we look at ourselves in the law of liberty, and then we go on and forget what manner of man we are, to under forget that we are a child of God, to forget that we belong to the Lord, and let ourselves live worldly, then guess what? We're not going to be blessed. But he says that our religion is vain. Our religion is vain if we cannot even bridle our tongue. If we don't practice what God's Word says in our lives to allow the Spirit to move us. To allow the Spirit of God to uh, have that authority over us. To influence us. Then it's vain. Right? Right? Until we allow the Spirit to work in us and to work through us and not ourselves, then we are not doing any good. Look at James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. It says, Who is a wise man and endowed with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness, of wisdom. So it's not just about speaking or talking a good talk, it's about walking a good walk. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil word. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy 
and good fruits. Not full of wrath, but full of mercy and good fruits. Without partiality. Not one way for one person and a different way for another person. And without hypocrisy. Not different for one person and different for yourself. <laughs> A lot of people expect people to put up with their ways when they won't put up with other people's ways. That's hypocrisy. Amen. We need to allow God to work in us because that other word, the, the other way is sensual and devilish. It's not from the wisdom of God. It's from the wisdom of the world. Well, do what I say, not what I do. Well, that's hypocrisy. Or this person... You know, I'll let slide when they do that. But if this person does it, they're going to get it. And that's partiality. That's not from God, is it? That wisdom that we need is pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 25, it says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. In other words, let the Holy Spirit work and move in your life in every situation. Not allowing the flesh to come to the forefront and ruin what God is wanting to do in your life and, and others' lives through you. But allowing the Spirit to have that control. In other words... Die to yourself. Amen? <laughs> Die to yourself. If you're not sure if what it is that you're going to do or say is right, then it's best not to do it at all. Amen? Until you know it is right. If you're unsure, then don't do it. Amen? It's better to keep quiet than to do something you're unsure about or say something uh, off the cuff that you haven't had time to think about and pray about. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Any other feelings that we have other than what is right here in the Word of God is not of God. And so we need to check that. Amen. We need to check that and make sure... That we are not going based off of feelings of the flesh, but that we are going off uh, the truth that is in God's Word. Yeah. The mercy, the bowels of mercies and kindnesses uh, and forgiveness in our heart that God wants us to have. That goes against what the flesh wants. It goes against what the world teaches. It goes against everything that even our minds uh, might think uh, is right. But you know what? <laughs> that's called dying to yourself, isn't it? It's called uh, giving yourself a living sacrifice unto God and saying, not my will be done, but thy will be done. Yeah. The next thing we find is folly or foolishness is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. Okay, we're talking about wisdom, the wisdom of God's word and putting it into practice. Wisdom is not stirring up strife, but making peace or appeasing strife through the righteousness of God, through the truth of God's Word. The other side of that coin 
uh, foolishness or folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. But a man of understanding walketh uprightly. So those who are destitute of the wisdom of God's word, they take joy in foolishness. They think that they're doing something that is uh, worth praise when they lose their temper and choose someone out or when they do something of that nature, when they uh, someone says something to them and, and they beat them up or whatever. They think that that's, they're doing something good. They think that they should be applauded for it when that's not what God wants us to be. Amen? The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. Uh, so uh, those who are destitute of wisdom, they take joy in foolishness. But a man of understanding is going to walk uprightly. People might point their finger at them and laugh at them and say that they're weak and say that they're weak-minded and say that uh, they're not a man or uh, they won't stand up for themselves or whatever they want to say. But you know what? It's not about us. It's about God working through us. Yeah. And who cares what man has to say anyway? We should care what God has to say. And it takes more of a man... Uh, to walk away from a, uh, a confrontation than it does to allow the flesh uh, to take control of the situation. So they can say and believe what they want, but they what they believe and, and think is foolishness anyway. And so it takes uh, more of a man to live for God than it does to live for the flesh. For sure. Look at Proverbs chapter 26. Because the fight you have within yourself to control yourself is bigger than any fight you have with anyone else. <laughs> I promise you that. <laughs> it's easy to lose your temper. It's easy to go off the cuff. But the fight that you have of controlling your temper and controlling yourself is the, the greater fight that we have to fight. Proverbs chapter 26 and verses 17 and 18, it says, He that passeth by and meddleth with strife, belonging not to him, is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. <laughs> As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? Okay. So that person who looks for strife, looks for a fight, looks for something to uh, get angry about, you know, they're, <laughs> they're bringing destruction or they're bringing pain to themselves just like someone just going over and, and starts picking a fight with a dog. <laughs> You're going to you get the dog by the ears. You're going to get the teeth, right? Mm -hmm. And as a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is that man who deceiveth his neighbor and saith, I'm just having fun. I'm not on the sport. Mm -hmm. We're just having fun. The Bible says that's silliness. That's foolishness uh, to act that way. And to do things to deceive people and think it's funny. So, again, it's, it's going to go on the, the level of are we trying to do what's right before God or are we just doing whatever feels right to the flesh? Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. You know, the world has the motto, if it feels right, do it. To me, that's kind of as silly as the motto of that uh, TV show. What is that TV show called? It's not Goodies. That's a different one. Anyway, it's the one where he goes around and eats all this weird stuff all over the place. And his motto is, if it looks good, eat it. <laughs> Well, there's some stuff that he eats that I don't think I would want to touch with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> but the world has that motto, well, if it feels good, do it. Yeah, you're asking for trouble, too. 
Because we know that the uh, wages of sin is death. Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 15 through 21 it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools or foolishly, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Amen. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the, with the Spirit. And what does wine do when you're drunk with it? It intoxicates you. Okay? It's intoxication. It influences you in a way that you would not normally be influenced. And everyone's different. Some drunks are mean. Some drunks are happy. Some drunks are, uh, you know, you know, sick or, you know, who knows. But the thing is, is we're not supposed to be intoxicated with the things of this world, such as wine and drugs and all that kind of stuff that influence physically. We are to be filled with the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to influence us. Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody, melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Yeah. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Some people are like a bunch of roosters. They just want to strut around and try to throw their weight around and try to, you know, beat the other one down and show their dominance. But God says, submit ourselves one to another in godly fear. And it also says, be not many masters. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 1 through 3, it says, Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly or foolishness in him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is or at his left. Yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth him. And he saith to every one that he is a fool. A little folly in him that is trying to uh, have a reputation of wisdom and honor. And, or you could say being a Christian, right? Someone who wants to have that reputation, calls themselves a Christian, but yet has foolishness in him. Guess what? He stinks <laughs> to God. Yeah. That stinks to God. Supposed to be something when they're allowing the foolishness of the flesh and of the world to cloud what God wants to do in their, their hearts and minds. Yeah. So don't be a foolish or don't be foolish. Have that wisdom and that understanding of God's word dwell in you and live in you and hold forth the word of life. Amen. Hold forth the word of truth in your life. The thoughts, number three, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. Amen. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. Amen. And if we will get rid of our thoughts and seek His thoughts and His word in our heart and lives, then we will be able to have those words that are pure and pleasant. The words of life. The truth that God has given to us. Look at Matthew chapter 15. Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 15 and six, verse 16 through 20, it says, And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever enter, that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the dry? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile the man. Yeah. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Yeah. So it's the things out of our own hearts mm -hmm. that can defile us, isn't it? That's why the Bible says to keep our heart with all diligence, mm -hmm. for out of it are the issues of life. So how do we keep our heart? We just sing it tonight. <laughs> Let the words of my mouth and the meditation mm -hmm. of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. He said, I hide thy word in my heart, but I might not sin against thee. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> so it's through the word of God, not just hearing, but doing in our lives, mm -hmm. practicing the word of God. Practicing, putting, putting it in work in our lives. Are we going to be perfect at it at first? No. We're going to have failures many times in putting these things into practice. But that doesn't mean we should give up and then just justify ourselves by saying, Well, this is just the way I am. No. You keep practicing at it. A righteous man falleth seven times, yet gets up again. The Bible says, if you fall seven times, guess what? Humble yourself and get up again. Yeah. And continue to practice these things and then they will become easier. Yeah. I gave the example of, of church. You know, when a person hasn't been in church, it's hard to go to church. But if they will commit to it and make themselves, even when it's hard to, and continue to do that, you know what? Before long, it becomes natural. It becomes instinct. It becomes to the point where you don't even think about it. You know where you're going. Amen? Mm -hmm. And it's not so hard anymore. It's like tithing. The first time someone puts into practice the uh, wisdom of God's Word in tithing, it's hard. Because they're thinking about how they could use that money for stuff other than they need. Mm -hmm. But they, when you make yourself do it, because thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. and you want to be right before Him, and continue in it, before long, it's easy to do. Mm -hmm. Before long, you don't even think about it. You just do it. And if there is a thought of not doing it, you think, man, that's crazy talk. I have to do it. Yeah. Because then you've seen the blessing of God in your life from doing it. And that's the whole thing about it. Is everything that we do for the Lord at first when we start putting it into practice. Yeah, it's hard. It's just like exercising. If you don't exercise and you just start to walk. Me and Dad started riding bikes last year. I'm going to tell you what. It was hard at first. I mean, it was real hard. But the more that we did it, the more our bodies got used to it. And the more it wasn't, as hard as what it was. So it's the same thing in exercising godliness. At first it is going to be hard and there are going to be obstacles and there are going to be setbacks. And sometimes there's going to be times where you want to give up. But you have to keep going for the Lord. Yeah. If, if you're led by the Spirit of God, He is going to help you. Amen? He's going to give you the strength when you think you don't have the strength. If you will just purpose in your heart to do it and to keep His Word, then God is going to work through you to do His will. Yeah. Look at Matthew chapter 12. In verses 34 through 37 it says, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. 
For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Yeah. So we need to understand that how we live, what we do, what we say is all important mm -hmm. to God. Yeah. And it should be important to us. And then look at Psalm chapter 37 if you will stand with me as we read. Psalm chapter 20, uh, 37, excuse me. Psalm chapter 37, starting in verse 27. It says, Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. Yeah. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Yeah. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. Yeah. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Amen. Enough said right there. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. Lord, we just pray that you would help us to use it in our lives. Lord, to continue in those things. Lord, to... Uh, purpose in our hearts to practice uh, godliness, to exercise ourselves in godliness. Lord, that we might be the vessels that you want us to be, that you might mold us and make us. Lord, that we might truly uh, show forth Jesus Christ in our hearts and lives. Lord, forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray.